They're asking for, uh, right at the beginning, what's the initial flow rate when the tap is fully on? So remember, what you've got is the same scenario we had before, but they're actually controlling what's happening here, right? So they don't want to just, I don't know if any of you have um, a house that's old enough like mine where if you suddenly turn the water off, you hear the pipes go, and you're like, what happened, right? So what they're doing, I'm not the only one. What they do is they're slowly levering it so that the water slows down and then it stops. Okay. So, um, hydraulics is just about flow of water. Right? So, what they're doing therefore is, at time zero, right? prior to this, at some negative time, right? prior to this, there have been, well, the tap fully on, and then they start to slow it down. So, right at the beginning, you evaluate dV on dt, and this is the number you get. Okay, now I'm just going to put down a vote to say this, right? Your flow rate is negative. Part of what rates of change is about, um, and every other part of um, physical world, is being able to say, I can interpret numbers and tell you what they mean, not just work out what the right numbers are. So I think it is vastly superior in this question to say, rather than leave it at negative 2, or even to say the flow rate is negative 2, I prefer to say water is flowing and that negative means something. It means water is flowing out at such and such a rate. I think that's a much better way to say it. Okay? Um, later on we talk about direction and there's up or down or left or right. Say the words, tell me what on earth is going on. Part B, same thing that we saw before, um, the flow rate, when is the tap switched off? The tap's fully switched off, you know, we're doing this gradually, when the volume isn't changing anymore. So that's dV on dt. So you solve for that, you get your value, and again, I conclude and that's where I bring my units in, okay? And now it starts to get more interesting. So, part C, have a read. It says, given that when the tap has been turned off, there's still 500 cubic meters of water left in the tank. Find V as a function of time. So this is a very similar, well, it's almost an identical scenario to before. I'm going to need to move from dV on dt to V. How do I do that? What's the tool? Integration, right? So the first thing I'm going to write is V equals, and then I'm going to integrate my flow rate. Okay, so it looks like this. Now, do you remember I said to you before, ah, oh, the calculus, the differentiation integration, not that hard. As a consequence, the, one of the very common errors that people do is because they're not thinking about that so much, they're thinking about all of this stuff, people frequently differentiate instead of integrating or they integrate instead of differentiating, okay? So always check back and think, what on earth am I doing here? And then does that reflect what I've got here? So when you differentiate negative two, sorry, when you integrate, there you go, see what I did? When you integrate negative two, what do you get? Minus two. Minus two t. When you integrate one on 10 t, what happens to the power? It goes up, yeah. So that power goes up. And then I have to divide by the new power, which of course is two. So I'm getting uh, that on 20. Are you happy with that? And of course, because it's indefinite, you shouldn't have been happy because now I have a constant and now it's actually correct. So at this point I say, well that's V, but I know something about V that will help me work out this constant. Namely, when, okay, what do I know? Someone tell me. When T equals 20, that's when the flow rate stopped. You see how all of these build on top of one another? I know there are supposed to be uh, 500, 500 cubic meters left, right? So when t equals 20, v equals 500, and I'm going to use this, substitute in, and get a value out for c. So let's just quickly do that. I'm going to get this. How does that look? Yeah? Okay. Cancel, cancel. Uh, this is negative 20 over here on this left hand side, so when I add it, I'm going to get that. So now I can bring that back into my original function for volume, and that's my actual function. Done. Okay. We've got our V, our volume, as a function of time. Where do they want us to take this? Part D says, hence, find how much water is released during the time it takes to turn the tap off. How much water is released? So what you're trying to compare is where you started and where you ended. Now, in fact, I already know where I end. The question told me, right? I'm gonna end at 
500 liters, right? So all I need to do is compare that to to the beginning, which is this amount here. Like I just worked out um, if I put in t equals zero, it's pretty easy, you can see those disappear. So I just want to show that though. I'm going to say when t equals zero, or I could just say as easily say initially, volume is equal to uh, zero plus zero plus 520, right? So this is actually my starting point. So I can say therefore, um, the what's the wording that they use? Um, the water released, water released. And then all I'm doing here is taking the difference, right? I began with 520. The question itself told me there were 500 cubic meters left when the tap turned off. So I subtract that, which gives me this. And then I'm going to conclude and bring my units in, okay? Okay.